In today's video, we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator to create this kind of rustic vintage looking logo for a homebrew craft beer company. Uh, to get started today, you will need to download a couple of things off the internet first. So just jump over to your web browser and head over to dafont.com and find this lemon milk font collection. Give it a download and install a few of those fonts. Um, it's a really handy one to have installed on your computer because I think it looks really good. And it's got good variations and it's a freebie. The other thing you're going to need that is free is this collection of beer mugs. Okay, It's a vector pack. Um, it's completely free as well from freepick.com. The link will be in the description of the video. Just click the green download button to get yourself a copy of that. And the final thing you're going to need if you would like, is to fork out just a little bit of money for this fantastic um, vintage font bundle from Heritage Type Co. So inside this bundle, you get these awesome fonts that you can see here. And you also get these ornaments that go around it as well. So you can see the flowers, the leaves, the borders, all those kind of shapes come in this pack as well. And it is well worth the 49 bucks. So it's a great special uh, to grab this vintage font bundle. I went ahead and bought it and yeah, I've been using it heaps in my design. So if you're a bit of a graphic designer, I'd highly recommend it. If you don't want to spend that money though, don't stress. Um, all we're actually using this um, bundle for in this tutorial are these little swirls here and the little star shape. I'm sure you can find some freebies if you do a bit of a Google search. Try and find some vectors that have star shapes or some curls and swirls. Okay, but I do highly recommend just forking out that little bit of money to get this pack. All right, so what I'm going to do is head over to Adobe Illustrator and open up this ornaments file. That's from the um, vintage font bundle that we downloaded. And we also have this uh, beer mug pack from freepick.com. Make sure that's open as well. We are going to use a few shapes from those designs in a moment. Before we do get started on using those though, we do need to make a new file. So head up to File and New. Select the print template and we're going to choose our own sizes today. So go to Pixels, set it to 800 pixels width, 800 pixels in height as well. The joy of using vectors is you can start with a small file size like this. And if you do want to make your logo bigger later on, by all means, go and do so. It's um, possible to stretch out vectors as big as you want, and they're never going to lose any quality. Okay, so it's fine to start with a small file size for now. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to put a background onto our page. So I'm going to go and grab my rectangle tool. I'll press the letter M for the shortcut. Turn the stroke off from your properties there and change your fill color to the darkest gray that you can see down here next to the black. Simply start in the top left hand corner, click and drag, whoops, didn't quite get in the corner. Click and drag down to the bottom right corner. The word intersect will appear when you're on the corners. Now once you've got that background in, head over to your layers panel, expand layer one and just lock that rectangle into place by hitting that little box next to the eye there. A padlock will appear. Just showing you that this um, background is now locked in position. We can't move it. We can't edit it at all. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of circles, which is going to be the border for my logo to draw everything inside of. So I'm going to have to go and grab my ellipse tool. And from my properties here, I'm going to turn the fill off and I'm going to turn the stroke on to white. I'm going to set it to size 5 points. Now, once I've got that, oops, I'm just going to try and hover around the center of the page. You should see your guide appear, and it will tell you when you get the center with that little um, bit of pink writing. Click and drag out from the center while holding Alt and Shift at the same time, and that's going to make you a circle that is perfectly drawn coming out of the center of the page. Now, you want it fairly big. It's almost going to touch the edges, so something like that. Once you've got that, simply go to Edit, Copy, Edit, paste in place. So we've now got a second circle right on top of the other one. Hold Alt and Shift again and simply drag it down a little bit. So we've got two circles now, one inside of the other. So you get a bit of a border like so. Next thing we get to do is to bring in the beer mug that you want for your logo. Doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm going to go with this one here. Um, simply go up to Edit and Copy. Edit, Paste. 
probably come out a little bit small for our liking so feel free to just give it a bit of a resize and move it towards the top of the page okay you want it roughly in the center something like that isn't too bad I might even go just a wee bit bigger there you go that looks pretty good now I'm going to use um, my new font lemon milk to start off my text it's going to start pretty simple actually we're just going to write the date the company was founded which was 1980 I'm going to start with the letters or oh, well, the numbers sorry 19 the f uh, I don't worry about the fill color just yet actually we're just going to change our font to lemon milk regular and the size we can probably nudge it up to around I'll go 30 to start with just move it down next to your mug of beer. We might resize that a bit later if it looks a bit out of place. Now to change that color, all you need to do is select your text and grab the eyedropper tool. And I'm going to choose this lighter colored yellow or goldy color from my beer. You might have to click on it a few times to get it up. Yeah, that's all right. That's looking pretty good. And once you've got that, um, the right color and the right size, just go to edit and copy. And then edit paste in place holding shift and your right arrow you'll be able to move that new bit of um, text you typed in or the new number you typed in over to the other side of the beer mug and change it to 80 so basically saying this company was made in 1980 that's the top half of our logo done what we're going to do now is whack in a bit of text down below uh, using my text tool I'm going to write in the words craft beer in capital letters and again I want that color but all that I just chose from these numbers so use your eyedropper just click on the numbers there to select that yellowy kind of color as for size we need to get a lot bigger so let's bump it up um, it's going to fill up most of this section of the circle here so it's not a bad size right there actually that's about a hundred point if you wanted to go a wee bit bigger let's see what 110 is like uh, probably too big at 105 points seems to be working well for me so I'm just going to roll with that so craft beer is going to sit there for now we're going to put an, um, a bit of an effect on this in a moment just bear with me though because we're going to put the word homebrew above it so grab your text tool and this time Phil's going to be white and the font is going to be century gothic if you've got it on your computer otherwise just a skinny font like or similar to this one will look good and we're going to write the word homebrew. For some reason my fill color has gone black, so let's change it back to white. Size is way too big. Okay, so let's bump that down. Uh, maybe something around that size. Maybe size 50, I think, will look pretty decent. Okay, now these um, letters are a little bit condensed for my liking, so I'm going to use the tracking tool over here in my properties. Put a bit of space between those letters um, probably a hundred wouldn't be bad let's bump it up a little bit more 125 i'm going to make the tracking that's not bad at all puts a little bit of space between each letter just to spread it out and give it a nice look um yeah i'm happy with that so craft beer what i was saying before we need to put a bit of an effect on this so let me just zoom back a bit here so you can see our whole logo all I want is a kind of arc effect. So I'm just going to click on my text with my selection tool and go to effect. I'm going to choose warp and select arc. Okay, now it's good to press the preview button here so you can get a bit of an idea on how it's going to look. Is it the arc that I want? It's probably not the arc. I might even go um, arc lower. Oh, maybe arc upper. No. It's obviously way too big for now. I'll bring it down a bit and see how that's looking. It's not too bad. What if we go into the negatives here? Not quite what I'm after. I'll try the lower one. Yeah, this one looks a bit better. So arc lower. Let's try it around. I think 5% will probably do us. So it's just got this slight little arc to it. Just makes our logo that little bit more unique so click OK once you've got an arc lower at minus five percent I think that looks pretty decent okay it's nothing too ugly still very readable that text 
And the last thing I'm going to do is just put a little design down the bottom using some of the ornaments from this um, pack we downloaded earlier. So I'm going to use this curl here. I'm just going to simply copy it and paste it in. Now you can use your arrows or your mouse just to move it around. Make it a bit bigger. And I'm going to change the fill color to white. Uh, that's not too bad of a size, I don't think. So we're all with that. The other ornament I want is a star. I've got a few different stars here to pick from. I might roll with this one here. It's not too bad. So Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Stick it in down the bottom here. And the fill color, I'm just going to use my eyedropper again and I'm going to select that color that we um, chose for the letters here. It's that goldy kind of color. And then I'm going to, I'm going to copy this actually and then paste it in place and then go to object transform and I want to reflect it um, vertically seems to be fine so I'll click OK and using my right arrow key and the shift key I'll just nudge that across to the other side it's looking something like that now to do a bit of a lining of elements to make sure everything's fairly centered um, I'm going to click on my text here and you can use your align option here to center things. Okay, if you can't see that, go to window and choose align. You'll get this little panel that comes up with heaps of different options. You can distribute items, you can align them. Um, do I want to horizontally align the center? I do, so they're perfectly centered now. These guys down here, I want to distribute them evenly first of all. Um, so which one do I push? That one there, we want to horizontal distribute the center so they're the same distance apart from one another. I might group them now and then I'm going to select this text and then horizontally align the center of them so they're all perfectly in line with one another. So that's looking pretty good. Um, the beer I think is just a bit of a eye job. Just have a look at it and just nudge it around with your eyes until you get that perfectly or pretty much perfectly centered. Um, the last thing that I might do, it's just been bothering me throughout this tutorial, so I'll fix it up now. It's the color of the text and that little star, that yellow color. It's just a little bit full on. I think it needs to be a little bit more faded to give it that rustic kind of look. So I start with the craft beer here. If you just go and select that, head to your fill option over here. And instead of using the little swatches, go and use your color mixer. Just turn this one down a little bit, I think. Um, that'll just give it that rustic kind of look. So we're at zero, I might make these round them up a bit. So 25, 80, and five. So zero, 25, 80, and five are the colors I'm using there. You don't have to do the same, but I think that looks a bit better. What I'm gonna do now is just adjust these other yellows. So up here, Let's change them to 0, 25, 80, 5. Gives it the same kind of faded yellow look. And this star down here has been grouped together with these other two elements. So I'm going to have to double click on it to isolate this group and click on the star itself. And just do the same thing. So 0, 25, 80, and 5% for those values down there. Uh, you can click out of it, just double click out of it, and now I think we have a pretty good looking logo. So to save that up, a few options. If you just want to save it as a working file so you can come back to it and edit later on in Illustrator, just go to save, make sure it's an AI file. Okay, and we'll just call it Homebrew Craft Beer. If you want to save it for printing, I would recommend saving it as a PDF file. Okay, that's not a bad option. I'll just save that quickly. And the other way you can save it is if you want to use it for the web, I would recommend going down to export instead of save and choose export as and save it as a PNG or a ping file. Okay, another option is JPEG, but for a logo, I'd recommend ping. All right, so that is how you create a rustic looking beer company logo.